Right now, a Madison police officer shot on State Street and questions over who did it. Tracking some showers on radar this morning. We're going to talk about who they'll impact this morning. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to News 3 Now This Morning. On your Thursday, I'm Leah lynch -Eyde. And I'm Chris Stanford. Thanks for joining us. State investigators want to know what really happened on State Street early Sunday morning. Madison police say an officer was shot during an arrest attempt. It all started on State Street when a police sergeant saw Katwan Richardson on a street camera out after his bail curfew. Our investigative reporter, Naomi Cole, spoke with Richardson's attorney yesterday. He says the way police worded their press release Sunday morning and then their silence in the aftermath left his client in an unfair position. Why didn't the police department personnel or, or the, uh, those that are in uh, supervisory positions or the police chief himself, someone, indicate that, wait a minute, we're not saying this young man shot anyone, let alone one of our officers. We don't have any proof of that. The State Department of Justice is leading the investigation. That's standard protocol for any officer shooting. Now, as we learn more about this case, we will be pushing updates out through our mobile app. You can download it for free in your app store. Now this morning, Rhonda Sweats is planning to return as her role as the Vila Zoo, uh, the Dane County Vila Zoo director next week. According to the State Journal, Rhonda agreed to have her charges dismissed in two years if she completes alcohol treatment as well as some other rules. She is accused of groping a former co-worker back in 2018. Schwetz is set to return Monday. Wisconsin Republicans are getting support from musician and sporting activist Ted Nugent on a package of hunting bills this morning. The measures would declare open hunting season on Sandhill Cranes and allow anyone age 18 or older to carry a concealed firearm without a permit. Nugent joined more than 20 lawmakers inside the assembly chamber where he called hunting essential. I'm speaking for those millions and millions of American families who pursue this lifestyle of hands-on conservation. The package of 13 bills is making its way through the Republican-controlled legislature right now, but Governor Evers, of course, would need to sign off on them before they become law, and he is likely to veto many of those measures. The TSA says airline passengers are bringing a record number of guns to airports. In the first nine months of the year, TSA officers have caught more than 4,500 guns at checkpoints. A majority of them were loaded. That number surpasses the full year record set in 2019, and it comes as officials deal with an unprecedented surge in belligerent passengers. The FAA says airline crews have reported more than 4,700 of those incidents this year. The Washington, D.C. jail is facing questions over potential civil rights violations. A federal judge referred the jail to the Department of Justice for failing to get treatment for a U.S. Capitol rioter who needs surgery. The jail warden and Department of Corrections director were also held in civil contempt. Other Capitol rioters have complained, saying the conditions are unsafe or unsanitary. Judges have said they are working with the jail to address those complaints. New this morning, a new civil rights lawsuit against former Wauwatosa officer Joseph Mensah. It's in the fatal shooting of a man sleeping in his car in 2016. Jay Anderson's estate filed a lawsuit alleging Mensah violated his constitutional rights that night. Mensa shot and killed three people in the line of duty within five years. The lawsuit also names the city and former police chief Barry Weber as defendants. Anderson's attorney says he was following Mensa's instructions. If we don't hold law enforcement officers like Joseph Mensa accountable, then who can we hold accountable? A spokesperson for the Wauwatosa Police Department confirms the department is aware of the lawsuit, but says it can't comment on the situation. Mensa left Tosa PD last year and is now a Waukesha County Sheriff's Deputy. Former Chief Weber retired earlier this year. All right, 603 now. Let's switch gears. Turn it over to Chris Reese with your certified most accurate forecast. Hey, Chris. Good morning. We're tracking some of those showers as you work your way towards southeastern parts of Wisconsin early on this morning. This is not going to impact a lot of folks, but nonetheless, we're letting you know what's out there as you head out. I want to zoom things out just a little bit. You see this little rope of moisture that really goes all the way down towards Arkansas, and I'll tell you, it goes all the way down towards the Gulf of Mexico. Well, that is connected all the way right here towards the upper Midwest and that's what we are watching as we go throughout the morning. Now, some of these showers are trying to show up just south of Platteville, 
but right now the air is a little bit dry, so I don't expect that to be reaching the ground. Now you work your way closer towards Racine and Kenosha counties. That's where you do have the better chance of some of this making it towards the ground, but we're going to keep an eye on this as we go throughout the morning. What we do know, though, it's cloudy. Cloud cover is expected as you go throughout your morning. Eventually, we'll start to see a return to that sunshine, but we're talking about lunchtime by the time that sun comes back. 60 is where we stand right now. Winds are out of the south and west at 6 miles per hour. Janesville's at 63. Meanwhile, it's 57 in Lone Rock. Mineral Point coming in at 55. Track the yellow shading. Where you see that yellow shading and the coloring, that's where your best chance is to actually see a shower as we go throughout today. So again, extreme southeastern Wisconsin, they have the better chance of showers. Most of us are dry, but we are going to see the cloud cover. This right here is future track, well overdone when it comes to that shower potential this morning, but I believe it gives us a good handle of what to expect as we move towards tomorrow. So I want to show you guys that one. This is later on this afternoon at 1230. Notice how quickly that sunshine returns. Temperatures are right around 60 degrees. We will top out around 66 or so as we start to move towards the afternoon. Overnight tonight, cloud cover comes right back in. This is tomorrow at 8 o'clock. You see those shower chances moving into the mix and they're in and out just like that. So it's a quick moving shower chance as we start to move into your Friday. Then what happens as we move to the weekend? We are talking sunshine with some cooler temperatures, especially on Saturday, 58 tomorrow, 58 Saturday. And then we are going to see those temperatures really hanging out into the 60s for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday next week. And all of that does come with sunshine. Our only real disturbances to pay attention to Check out Wednesday night. We could see some showers overnight Wednesday into Thursday. That is a cold front that's going to bring those temperatures right back down into the 50s. So then we get you towards the end of next week, Leah. Temperatures are back into the upper 50s. And this is the coolest weather we have seen so far this season. This is the coolest forecast I've put together so far this season. But even still, it is well above normal for this time of the year. Your overnight lows are typically into the lower 40s, but by the time we get you towards the end of this next 10 days, your overnight lows are in the 30s on average, and we're still gonna be in the 40s with your afternoon highs typically in the mid 50s, and we're in the upper 50s, so we're still trending warmer than normal. The Spanger alum is looking ahead to game day, to tailgating, it's gonna be kinda windy, huh? At least sunny, though. Some sunny, cool, but a little breezy while you're out. All right, Chris Reese with that full breakdown, we appreciate it. 607 now, after decades of serving its community, a church on Madison's south side is seeking some help of its own. Mount Zion Baptist Church offers services ranging from free academic programs to a food pantry and drop-in therapy. It's outgrowing its space, and its building dates back to the 1960s with an unstable foundation. So, Mount Zion's pastor is trying to raise $9 million for a new community life center in the same spot. The 40,000 square foot space would include a fitness area, a new food pantry, and a dedicated space for kids and teens. So that's our goal, to take all of that programming that we have on different parts of the church, different areas, different buildings. The goal is to put everything in one building so we can be the hub of hope to be able to help those who are in need and help those in our community. If you would like to see the new plans and learn how to donate, you can head on over to mtzlife.com. We have that link over on channel3000.com. Coming up, a poster worker shot and killed in Colorado. What we know about the gunman. And in the 608, Josh Breider checking out an area cemetery just in time for Halloween where you can learn some local history. At Pick and Save, we know that the slower a banana ripens, the longer it stays fresh. So we keep things fresher than fresh by ripening them slowly. Bananas, B-A-N-A-N-A-S. It's Island Furniture's 42nd anniversary sale. Save up to 42% off store-wide. Get 42 months free financing plus tax included on purchases over $9.99. Huge selection in stock now at A1 Furniture. Madison's locally owned family furniture store. Celebrating 40 years of winners and readers. It's Madison Magazine's Best of Madison Taste Party. Monday, November 15th from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Edgewater. Sample food and drinks, enjoy music, and meet some of this year's winners. It's Madison Magazine's Best of Madison Taste Party. Monday, November 15th at the Edgewater. Tickets are online now. Presenting sponsor, Woolersheim Winery and Distillery. And supporting sponsors, the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund and Beef Butter Barbecue. 
Fry Construction is celebrating 26 years of providing excellence in home improvements. We strive to exceed the expectations of our clients with each and every project we do. Respected by your neighbors and voted Best of Madison two years in a row. Best kitchen and bath design. Best roofer. Experience the Best of Madison for yourself and save 26% off gutters or insulation with any full roofing project. Schedule your consultation today at FryConstruction.com. All Denny's pancakes are made to order with fresh buttermilk, but this month's Spotlight Stack feels like fall and is the pumpkiniest, pecan pie drizzliest, and most gram-worthy of them all. New pumpkin pecan pancakes, this month's Spotlight Stack. See you at Denny's. It's time to find your next Chevy truck and forge ahead. Take on new challenges and take it to the next level. It's the perfect time to do more in your next Chevy. Find new possibilities, find new roads. Eligible customers get great offers from GM Financial Plus. No monthly payments for 120 days on all 2021 Silverado 1500 crew cab pickups and get $1,500 cash allowance. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. This year has been good for binging, but bad for bodies. Maybe your me time could use an upgrade to Massage Envy, where more people go to feel and look better. Massage Envy, keep your body working. Don't miss A1 Furniture's 42nd anniversary sale. Save up to 42% off name brand mattresses and get 42 months free financing plus tax included on purchases over $9.99. Huge selection in stock now at A1 Furniture. Madison's locally owned family furniture store. How do we make sure pick and save food is fresh? We put sensors on our coolers, and if something changes, we drop whatever we're doing to take care of it. That way, we can make sure pick and save food isn't just fresh, it's fresher than fresh. You're watching News 3 Now This Morning. Winner of the National Edward R. Murrow Award for Overall Excellence in Television. Welcome back. We are bringing history to life in the 608 this morning. Josh Breider here now with how uh, you can learn uh, a lot about some famous folks and their connection to the uh, Janesville area. It's a fascinating story, Josh. Hey guys, good morning to the both of you. We're talking about cemetery tours and no, not the spooky ones, even though it is that time of year. This is a chance for you to discover the stories behind some local folks commemorated with buildings or roads named after them. The all new Oak Hill Cemetery Tours are bringing history to life in the next couple of weeks. Rock County Historical Society will be providing tours of the cemetery in Janesville. Historical interpreters will be sharing the stories researched by local history experts. This is an opportunity to learn about some of the area's most well-known people who are buried there. RCHS Executive Director Tim Moss tells me the tours are a safe way for people to have fun while learning the intriguing history about people who made an impact in Rock County. If we don't understand where we came from or how we got to where we are, whether we just, or we're new to the community or grew up and um, were raised here, um, it's always important. So, so the good things can continue to perpetuate and bad things aren't repeated. Tour dates are set between October 23rd and the 29th. Again, tours are educational in nature and are not a haunted experience as Oak Hill is a working cemetery. So organizers ask the grounds be treated with respect. Those tours began at the Oak Hill Chapel in Janesville. If you're interested in checking it out, tickets are still available. You can get them both in person that day or online. And I've got the information on channel3000.com. And ahead in our next half hour, guys, why the Rock County Historical Society says it is important to provide the community with programs such as this. One. Boy, what a history lesson, Josh. Yeah. It's pretty cool to see, and you know, I think a lot of local cities should do something like this because all these roads that you're driving by, maybe these buildings that you pass by every single day, there's history there, and the name of that building is probably someone who was famous for this area and did something really cool. So I think there's a lot we can learn. Yeah, and I think uh, one of your interview subjects said it really well. You want to uh, know your history so that you can, you know, repeat the good things that happened and avoid the things that uh, should be. So uh, I love that. Fascinating stuff this morning, Josh. Thank you. Remember to let Josh know what inspires you in the 608. Here is his handle on social media, his email, if you want to shoot him an email for a chance to be featured. Some new information this morning, a circuit court of appeals denying Dylan Roof's request to reconsider recusal. The self-proclaimed white supremacist was sentenced to death in January of 2017. This after he killed nine people at a historically black church in Charleston. 
His attorneys filed a petition last month to review his previously upheld death sentence. They filed an appeal in August, arguing Roof should not have been allowed to represent himself during sentencing. During that hearing, Roof told jurors there was nothing wrong with him psychologically and to disregard his attorney's arguments. Continuing coverage now in Colorado, police are on the hunt for a gunman who shot and killed a postal worker. It happened yesterday in Longmont, about 40 miles north of Denver. Witnesses say the suspect approached the victim and shot him multiple times. Law enforcement not saying, though, whether they think it was a random act. The postal worker is the third in the U.S. to be killed in the last two days. Two Postal Service employees were shot dead Tuesday in a Memphis postal facility. Overseas, police in Norway have a Danish man under arrest who they say killed five people with a bow and arrow. This is near the Norwegian capital of Oslo. The police chief in the town says the suspect walked around the city shooting at people with arrows. Two people were wounded. They are in the hospital in intensive care. That includes an officer who is off duty and inside the shop where the attack took place. To the wildfires out west now, the Aliso fire is quickly growing in the Santa Barbara area. Santa Barbara County Fire Department says that teams are battling flames fanned by wind gusts of up to 50 miles an hour. This fire has shut down intersections, uh, including highways and Amtrak and Pacific Railroad lines are closed. Evacuation orders are in place too. So far, firefighters have only contained about 5% of the 14,000 acre fire. Chris Reese keeping an eye on our own weather here in Wisconsin. How's it looking out there, Chris? We are looking warmer than normal as we go through the next couple of weeks. Stop me if you've heard that one before. This has really been something we've said time and time again since the summer. Temperatures have been above average. This is going to continue even though we're gonna start to cool things down. So it's gonna feel like we're colder than normal. No, we're just finally cooling off, but still above where we typically would be this time of the year. So look for a shot of some cooler air into the weekend, milding back up as we move towards Monday before another shot of some cooler air really starts to settle in as we start to move towards the end of next week, perhaps. Some of the coolest air we've seen so far this season. Mm, something to watch as we go through time. That being said, our normal high today is 61. By the time we get you towards next Saturday, 10 days from now, your normal high is 57. So we're talking temperatures that are generally going to be staying above average overall, but then it's your overnight lows too. That's something to watch. Our normal overnight low is 41 at this point. We get towards the end of the next 10 days. Your normal overnight low comes down towards 38. We'll be below average as we start to move towards tomorrow night. That's our first overnight low that's anticipated to be into the 30s. But notice how most of our overnight lows are going to be in the 40s as we go through the next 10 days. So this is keeping us warmer than normal. Even if you're just warmer than normal, you're warmer than normal. Here's traffic for you. We've been watching the highways this morning. We are not seeing any major issues. There is construction out there, but what we don't have this morning is necessarily rain to impact your commute. So that being said, keep it slow. Let's get to work. Let's get home safely as we go throughout today. Chris Reese, thank you very much. 617 now, lots of parents are waiting on the news that Pfizer's COVID vaccine will be approved for kids as young as five years old. Our Christina Laurie found out what that rollout will look like in Wisconsin and at your pediatrician's office. By the end of the month, an estimated 28 million kids between the ages of 5 and 11 are expected to become eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine. And here in Wisconsin, local pediatricians are getting ready to administer tens of thousands of doses and answer just about as many questions. The Delta variant is, is, is much more contagious and it does seem to affect the children um, more severely than um, the initial variant. This time next month, that could change if the Pfizer vaccine is approved for younger children and kids between the ages of 5 and 11 start getting their shots. Pfizer says this age group will get two doses 21 days apart with each shot one third the strength of what adults receive. I think the parents uh, would want to know about how safe the vaccine is and then also how effective the vaccine is. Speaking of adults, doctors know parents will have questions as will kids. SSM Health Dr. David Ottenbaker says healthcare providers are ready to answer those in person, over the phone, and online. And they encourage kids to get involved too. Really a, a parental decision based, based on the age of their child and what they can understand. Once approved by the FDA, CDC, and state health department, local doctors will administer shots in a number of ways, at checkups, pharmacies, hospitals, and pop-up clinics. The Delta variant um, 
you know, is becoming more impactful to our children. And that's why we really do, again, strongly recommend that they get vaccinated. Parents, although you're not able to officially schedule an appointment for your children just yet, today you can activate your online MyChart account, which is the method doctors prefer you use to schedule an appointment once they do become available. Reporting in Madison for News 3 Now, I'm Christina Laurie. Airline news now. The TSA says 40% of its workers are unvaccinated and the deadline is looming. They need to be fully vaccinated by November 22nd, right before the busy Thanksgiving travel period. It takes a couple of weeks for those doses to kick in, so time is running out. Even with the single dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine, employees would have to get the shot by November 8th. The TSA administrator says the agency is now creating a contingency plan in case of a staff shortage. The FDA asking food manufacturers, chain restaurants and food service operators to voluntarily reduce salt in processed and packaged foods. The agency has new guidelines for 163 categories of food. The hope is to help Americans reduce their average sodium intake by about 12% over the next two and a half years. All right, 620 on your Friday Eve. Up next is the season for pumpkin way offs. This one right in our own backyard. And in our next half hour, an unsolved murder one year later. Well, we still don't know about the killing at Devil's Lake. Cobus and Buses, now hiring. After we backed that bus out of its stall and started driving, I just loved it. We really get a chance to get to know each other. Almost everyone has a different story about how they came to bus driving. So you really end up feeling like you're part of a family. Visit cobuson.com to apply. It's A1 Furniture's 42nd anniversary sale. Save up to 42% off store-wide. Get 42 months free financing plus tax included on purchases over $9.99. Huge selection in stock now at A1 Furniture. Madison's locally owned family furniture store. Associated Physicians celebrates 75 years of caring, helping, and listening. Associated Physicians. Devoted physicians, trusted care. We all dream of big things. A boat, a second home, or simply a better future for those around us. At the Burrish Group at UBS, we're invested in your dreams, no matter how big or small. Because we believe anything can be achieved with the right plan and goals in mind. Because when dreams come true, it's an experience that lasts a lifetime. Call the Burrish Group today. McGann Furniture in downtown Baraboo should probably be called McGann Furniture and Flooring because we're the area's oldest and most experienced floor covering store. Our friendly staff will explain the many types of flooring available, answer questions, and make suggestions so you can choose what's best for your home and lifestyle. We always offer free in-home measurements and estimates and use the finest installers in the entire area. And remember, at McGann, we don't inflate prices only to mark them down for a sale. Stop in today and discover the difference. You'll be glad you did. McGann Furniture, downtown Baraboo. You got her? I got her. I'm getting us McDonald's. Enjoy a sausage McMuffin with egg or a sausage burrito and pair it with a $1 any size Coke. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Mm. Okay, okay, I'm up, I'm up. Five more minutes. Break me of a piece of that Kit Kat bar. Bro, one more time. Where's the drip? Butter, cut, from a drip. Talk to my comment in the lake. Jiff peanut butter. F flow. Crazy. It's that jiffing good. Ludicrous changed his flow for it. Trust the first one weather team for your most accurate forecast. Don't miss A1 Furniture's 42nd anniversary sale. Save up to 42% off name brand mattresses and get 42 months free financing plus tax included on purchases over $9.99. Huge selection in stock now at A1 Furniture. Madison's locally owned family furniture store. Cobuson Buses, now hiring. Working with Cobuson, it's definitely been great because of the flexibility. If you do need time off, they work around you. They, they definitely try to make it a company that's based for you. Visit cobuson.com to apply. Welcome back. We're bringing you a scene from The Lion King this morning, or rather, Joel is. It looks like it, it looks like it's straight out of the movie, doesn't it? Pretty big fan of this, Joel. Thanks for sharing. Great shot. Share your morning with us. We'd love to see it. 
Use the hashtag MyNews3Morning when you post it on social media. Okay, it is October. We are talking all things pumpkin all month. Yesterday we showed you a pumpkin that weighed more than 2,100 pounds. Check out this guy. Uh, this guy comes from a uh, pumpkin way off here in Wisconsin. It got disqualified though. <gasps> And we're going to tell you why in a moment. It's pretty big. So this is uh, more than 2,500 pounds. It's the heaviest pumpkin in the country. And it's in Marcusan, Wisconsin, just west of Fond du Lac. It's not going down in the record books, though, because it cracked. Probably because I mean, he was standing on top of it. Come on, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, those pumpkins are... Uh, they're precious little creatures, and you need to be careful with them. They're yes. very sensitive. Fragile. <laughs> so here's what happened, really. The internal pressure uh, was just too much, and the weird way it was growing caused the crack, and that disqualified the pumpkin from all competitions this year. The grower, Mike Schmidt, says that the crack was just the size of a fingernail. Who cares? Because you can still <laughs> use this thing as a nice big old couch in I the middle of your yard, very Wisconsin. I see it. I was just thinking that, especially the way he was sitting on it. I was like, oh, we've got a nice little front porch chair there. Set that next to a campfire, grab an old-fashioned, give me a call. Until it rots and gets all mushy. Yeah, but it's so big, I feel like it would take a long time for that to happen. And then we just have copious amounts of pumpkin pie product. So is a pumpkin old spice, or a old spice, is a pumpkin old-fashioned a thing? You know, I was at a bar recently. Uh, on the western side of Wisconsin that serves honey in their old fashions. So why not throw some pumpkin spice in there? Sure. I'll report back. I'll, t you know, I'll, <laughs> I'll take the bullet and give it a shot. That'll you are be our old fashioned correspondent. Aficionado, they call me. All right, here's with the bus stop forecast, Chris. Yeah, if you head out the door today, we're going to see some cloud cover early on, but that's going to be going by the wayside as we go throughout time. So look for some sunshine showing up, especially as we get you towards the afternoon. Those temperatures are going to hang out into the 60s. We're moving into a pattern. It's going to be drier as we go through the next couple of weeks. This is a change from where we've been over the past several days. Thanks, Chris. Stick around. Another half an hour news for you on this morning right after this. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. This is a Wisconsin brewmaster. He brews the local craft beer. The beer that washes down the Oktoberfest broth. The broth that pairs with the potato salad. The potato salad that befriends the burger. The burger that tastes like victory. Festival Foods. We are Wisconsin. For a job you'll love, yeah, you gotta get down. Mount Pet Food Warehouse. Every day you'll get to help so many pets in town. Mount Pet Food Warehouse. We've been here 50 years and we're employee owned. With opportunities to grow. We'll match your 401k. Discount your pet supplies. With great benefits and more. Mount Pet Food Warehouse powers us all. And don't forget the free Mounds candy bars. At U.S. Cellular, we know the local landscape, so we can help everyone stay connected for less. And less also means more, as in more choice. While the other guys may limit your options, at U.S. Cellular, you choose any phone and we make it free. That's right, visit our store and any phone you see is free. Plus, get unlimited data for $30 a month and get the most out of our state-of-the-art network, wherever you choose to go. U.S. Cellular, America's locally grown wireless. What does it mean to fight for what's right? And who decides what's right? Is it right for an insurance adjuster to try to get you to settle for less than you deserve? Is it right to let victims struggle to pay their medical bills? To us, it means helping accident victims get their lives back to normal again. It means doing what's right for you. Habish, Habish & Rotier. We fight for what's right. If your credit card debt is out of control, if you're in over your head in monthly payments, there's a secret the credit card companies don't want you to know. If you have more than $10,000 in credit card debt, you have the right to let us settle that debt for a fraction of what you owe. That's bad news for the credit card companies, but it's great news for you. We're Credit Associates, and we're offering you free information on how to completely resolve your credit card debt with a monthly payment you can afford. To see how much you can save, call now. 1-800-914-7929. 
Don't declare bankruptcy. Don't consolidate. Give us 10 minutes and we could save you thousands. After all, we depend on your success and offer a guarantee so there's no risk to call. Credit Associates. Live better, debt-free. We'll even show you how to use your stimulus money to jumpstart our services and get you debt-free faster than you ever thought possible. Call Credit Associates now to see how much you could save for free. Call 1-800-914-7929. This is a Wisconsin farmer. She grows the locally sourced freshness, the freshness that complements the wild-caught salmon, the salmon that tees up the cheesecake, the cheesecake that sweetens every moment. Festival Foods. We are Wisconsin. Right now, students walking out over what they say East High isn't doing. Cloud cover as you head out the door, but we're going to tell you when you'll see a return of that sunshine today. Good Thursday morning, everyone. Welcome to News 3 Now this morning. I'm Leah Lynchine. And I'm Chris Stanford. Thanks for joining us. Students at Madison East High School are staging a walkout for tomorrow. It's to demand reform in support of a girl that they say was raped by another student. They say this allegedly happened over the weekend at a house party and that school officials were made aware of the incident soon after. They walked out yesterday to show support for the victim and to demand the alleged rapist be removed from school until the investigation is complete. Protest organizers say they reached out to Principal Sean Levy about their concerns, but they weren't taken seriously. There will be one on Friday to talk about reforms and taking Levy out of the school because that's also incredibly important. We reached out to the district for multiple comments yesterday, but have not heard back. Madison police tell us they have opened an investigation. You can find all of the details of this incident and stay up to date with this week's protests by getting updates through our mobile app. You can download it today in your app store. State leaders, including Governor Evers, announcing millions in funding to support victim services and research into violence prevention efforts. We're working to build the future we want for our kids in our state, and that means safe schools, safe streets, and safe communities. So today, we're working to address the cycle of violence and crime that has for too long gone uninterrupted. Because much like the pandemic, this is another public health crisis that deserves our attention and our action. Governor Evers and other leaders, including Attorney General Josh Call, say the $45 million we split into two portions. Let's break it down for you. $25 million will go towards statewide research and community-based solutions that address the root causes of violence. The other $20 million will be allocated for victim services. That will go to the Wisconsin Department of Justice, which will then use the money to administer grants to programs who work with victim services throughout the state. 632 now. Officers in Sauk County will provide an update today on the one-year anniversary of an unsolved homicide at Devil's Lake State Park. On October 14th of 2020, 24-year-old John Schmutzer was found dead along the Grotto's Trail in the state park. More than a dozen witnesses have all reported seeing the same man who investigators have dubbed the runner in that area at the time of the murder. But after hundreds of interviews and thousands of man hours, no arrests have been made in the last year. You can find an in-depth history of the investigation. It's up right now on channel3000.com. A Sparta Middle School student has been suspended twice now for refusing to wear a mask. Her parents say if that student gets suspended again for the same issue, she'll be expelled. The Sparta School District put a mask mandate in place last month for its students and staff. The family of this student suspended says that alternatives like virtual learning were offered for their daughter, but a compromise was not made between them. We are not against the mask policy. We are pro-choice. We're wanting our own voices. We, we need our, our school board to hear the community. School leaders say they are listening to health experts and therefore the mask mandate will stay in place. Misty Morales, who you just heard from there, the uh, student's mother, is running for an open Sparta school board seat. 633 now. Chris Reese is here with your certified most accurate forecast. Hey, Chris. Good morning. Lots of cloud cover out there as you are waking up. We will see a return of sunshine as we go throughout today, but we're also tracking some showers throughout parts of the state early on this morning as well. 60, that's what you're waking up to in Madison right now. Mineral Point, you're at 55. 51 of Viroca, uh, Boscobel, you're coming in at 56 this morning. Janesville's at 63. Notice how things are much warmer as you work your way over towards the shoreline. Milwaukee dropping from 70 towards 68. That's where we have a little bit more moisture 
in the air. So we do have to watch at least that chance for some showers, especially towards southeastern parts of Wisconsin. Radar is trying to show a shower working our way back towards the west, moving towards Madison. Our air is relatively dry, so I doubt anything other than maybe a drop or two will actually make it towards the ground. The true axis of this moisture is through northern Illinois and extreme southeastern Wisconsin. That is where the air is going to be uh, damp enough for any raindrops to truly make it all the way down towards the ground. So southeastern Wisconsin, you keep a chance for the showers and thunderstorms today. Madison points west. You're going to be cloudy earlier, but the expectation is that you are going to be staying dry. By the way, this is all still a part of that system that we've been tracking since yesterday. You see all the snow back throughout parts of Canada and the northern Rockies. But overall, this system is weakening and falling apart. So that clears out of here. We're going to see sunshine as we move throughout the rest of this afternoon. In fact, that sunshine will take hold lunchtime. That's when we'll start to see that cloud cover clear out sunshine all the way into the evening. But I'll tell you what I'm watching as we move towards tomorrow. It is this right here. That's going to be our next chance for showers and thunderstorms throughout parts of the day on Friday. The morning is going to have the best chance of rain, but we at least keep that chance around as we move into Friday. The cloud cover associated with that will also keep us cooler. 58 is your forecast high for your Friday. Same for Saturday. Saturday is just going to feel warmer because it's 58 and sunny. 58 with rain and clouds versus 58 and sunny are two different experiences, even though those temperatures are going to be similar. 60s show up as we move towards early next week. 50s to end next week. And I'll tell you, I've gone on the warmer side at the end of next week because a lot of the model data is even cooler than what I had for next Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. All right, here comes fall. Thank you, Chris. Across the state this morning, the Waukesha School District once again facing some backlash from parents and students. This time it's for their decision to remove pro-LGBTQ symbols from classrooms. Last night, students and parents stood in solidarity at the board meeting with many symbols on display, like you see here. The district administration says the choice was to remove what could be perceived as controversial symbols from the school. 35 parents gave public comment at last night's meeting. I believe children should not be bringing their sexual preferences, political ideology, gender identities to school. If you take down the symbols that everybody knows is a symbol of protection for a persecuted minority, then those that are, are likely to bully that population are emboldened by that. Pastor Simmons says even after symbols were removed, his daughter was bullied by another student who defaced a pride flag and then brought it to her table. Last night's discussion went on for hours. It had not been on the agenda, though, so the school board did not act. An FDA advisory panel will meet later today to discuss booster shots for the Moderna and J&J &J vaccines. So we anticipate hearing decisions from both the FDA and CDC very soon afterward. Preliminary data released yesterday shows people who got the one-dose J&J shot may be better off with a booster from one of the other vaccines. The White House says 7 million people have already received a Pfizer booster, which was approved for certain Americans last month. Outside this morning, uh, the sun uh, just about to come up here over South Central Wisconsin. We are tracking that cool down for you coming up and our next shot at some rain. And half a million cargo containers stuck outside the LA port making our shelves empty. But President Biden says help is on the way. And we're bringing history to life in the 608. I'll tell you where and how you can take part in cemetery tours coming up. At Pick and Save, we know that the slower a banana ripens, the longer it stays fresh. So we keep things fresher than fresh by ripening them slowly. Bananas, B-A-N-A-N-A-S. It's Island Furniture's 42nd anniversary sale. Save up to 42% off store-wide. Get 42 months free financing plus tax included on purchases over $9.99. Huge selection in stock now at A1 Furniture. Madison's locally owned family furniture store. Hi, I'm Dr. Andrew Orden, board-certified plastic surgeon and host of The Doctors. If you're like most people struggling with areas of stubborn, diet-resistant body fat, then it's time you call Sotobello. I lost two inches here in the waist, and I lost three and a half inches here in my hips. I can wear a little black dress. I feel sexy. I got to buy four brand new bikinis. I had abs after Sotobello. Sotobello can remove stubborn body fat permanently in just one visit. 
Sonobello's board-certified surgeons use micro-laser technology to safely target and remove your diet-resistant fat cells permanently. Schedule your free, no-obligation consultation and find out how you can get $250 off instantly on your stomach, back, or even your thighs. I actually tried a bikini on and I looked in the mirror and I thought, wow. Call 1-855-417-8921 or go to sonobello.com. Get your outdoor projects done right with Menards. With the best selection of pressure-treated lumber and the inventory to back it up, now is the time to get that outdoor project you've been meaning to get to done. Best yet, we've made it convenient for you to get in and get out. Whichever the project, Menards has the pressure-treated lumber to get it done. Furniture's 42nd anniversary sale. Save up to 42% off name brand mattresses and get 42 months free financing plus tax included on purchases over $9.99. Huge selection in stock now at A1 Furniture. Madison's locally owned family furniture store. How do we make sure pick and save food is fresh? We put sensors on our coolers and if something changes, we drop whatever we're doing to take care of it. That way, we can make sure pick and save food isn't just fresh, it's fresher than fresh. On the next live before, it started out as an April Fool's Day Facebook joke. But now, Culver's restaurants are selling the Carter Burger for one day only, Excellent. Friday, National Cheese Curd Day. The Gabby Petito case has held our nation's attention for weeks. But what about those who've gone missing right here in Wisconsin? Eric Franke digs into the News 3 Now archives to shine new light on one high-profile disappearance. Tonight on News 3 Now at 6. Hi, Chris. I'm Melissa from Dodgeville. Chris, plan my day. With enthusiasm, Melissa from Dodgeville. We're going to plan that day. Iowa County. Leah Lynchide's excited. Southwest Wisconsin showing up. There we go. Did you know that? What? Did you know I'm from Iowa County? We did know this. Oh. We all knew. We rarely mention it. Just yeah. making sure. This is, this is just the latest <laughs> series of breaking news. <laughs> Here Here's what we're watching you. in Dodgeville this morning. You are waking up to some cloud cover. All of us are in southern Wisconsin. We're going to see that sunshine return, though. That's good news. We get you to about lunchtime. You're going to see a little bit more of that cl uh, cloud cover go by the wayside. And in Dodgeville, it happens even earlier than it will for us in Madison. Temperatures are going to warm up into the upper 60s. I want to show you this. This is Doppler track. We are dry in Dodgeville. But Doppler track is showing a little bit of return in the atmosphere. That is rainfall that's actually evaporating before it actually makes it to the ground. Where it's actually making it to the ground, that's going to be much further towards the southeast throughout parts of northern Illinois, perhaps even Racine and Kenosha counties. But I want to show you the day. This is 12 o'clock. Iowa County, you are all clear. Those temperatures will be into the upper 50s, right around 60. And then we will remain clear as we go into your afternoon. Sun and 60s. It is going to feel great and fall like today. Since Leah was so excited, <laughs> we want Iowa County to send in more. If you live in Iowa County, Highland in particular, because we know Leah loves to shout out Highland, send in your Plan My Day video right Deacon here. Deacon Barb, let's go. Zeke and Barb. Oh, yes. Zeke and Barb. Go ahead and send that in. That'd be a good one. That would it? be a good one. All right. Mr. Reese, thank you very much. 642 now. We are bringing history to life in the 608 this morning. Josh Breiner is here this morning with a fascinating story about how we could all learn something about our own community. This is some really interesting stuff, Josh. Yeah, really cool story here, guys. The Rock County Historical Society holds various programs and events throughout the year, but they're putting a new twist on one that you can be part of here in the next couple of weeks. RCHS will be hosting all new Oak Hill Cemetery tours through the end of the month. Oak Hill is one of the oldest cemeteries in Janesville. Historical interpreters will be actually dressing up into character, sharing stories behind 11 local people from the past who were commemorated with things like buildings and roads that are named after them today. This includes names such as Thomas Ruger and General George Randall, who both have avenues named after them in Janesville. This is just one of the ways the Rock County Historical Society is working to bridge the stories of the past and present. My goal when I took over was to have everybody in the community see themselves here in, the, in our space. And um, we're working on that. That may be something we'll never be able to complete because, you know, things continue to change and evolve. But we're, we're up for the game. So I say if we're not, you know, telling or teaching history, we're making history. So we're having a lot of fun doing it. 
Oak Hill Cemetery tours are set between October 23rd and the 29th. They'll begin at the Oak Hill Chapel you can see right there. Because Oak Hill is a working cemetery, it's important to note tours are educational in nature and are not a haunted experience, even though it is October. You can get tickets both in person and online if you're interested. I put links up on the Channel 3000 mobile app. It should be right at the top of the app this morning. Again, this is just one of the events the RCHS puts on during the year, along with some other larger ones that help the society keep Keep going. If you want to learn more about how you can help, you can go to our website. Guys, I really hope this idea catches on with other cities. I'd love to know more about the people who built Madison. Even from when we were there for about an hour at Oak Hill and uh, in Janesville earlier this week, it's amazing just the little things that you learn, like Ruger Avenue, like we just mentioned. That's a big road in Janesville. A lot of folks travel that. There are a lot of places, probably in all of our cities across the 608, where you probably pass by it every single day and you have no idea the history behind it. So we should learn more about it. It's our home, right? Such a cool story. History is so cool. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Josh, thank you. Remember to let Josh know what inspires you in the 608. He'd love to hear from you. You can reach out on social media or email him at in the 608 at WICTV.com. Quarter to seven now. The Biden administration is trying to step in and fix congestion at the nation's biggest shipping port that's causing shortages in our stores. Yesterday, the White House announced the Port of Los Angeles is committing to 24-7 operations. The goal is to try and alleviate the more than 60 ships waiting to be unloaded. The night hours are critical for increasing the movement of goods because highways, highways are less crowded in the evening, at night. In fact, during off-peak hours in Los Angeles, cargo leaves the port at a 25% faster pace than during the day shift. However, there is still a truck driver shortage in the country, so taking the goods off of cargo ships could still be a problem. Major shippers, though, like FedEx and UPS, say they too will expand their overnight hours to help. Kellogg's workers in multiple states are now a week, uh, they're on week two of a strike. In Omaha, Nebraska, the workers have stood outside of Kellogg's plant around the clock. Kellogg's to do the right thing. The people are what makes you great. Last week, Kellogg's contract with its workers' union expired, and negotiations have been stalled since last year. The workers asked the public now not to buy Kellogg's products, uh, and if you do, uh, to make sure that the union logo is on the box. In an update from the Kellogg's company, they say they are ready, willing, and able to continue negotiations at any time. Meantime, the company is moving forward with plans to bring in outside workers to help run the plant during the strike. Ahead on CBS Mornings, do you know how much time your kids spend on social media? Let me ask you a question. When you're on TikTok, mm -hmm. do you feel smarter? Not smarter, kind of just like more free. I feel like when I'm on TikTok, I can like relate to things better, you know? CBS Mornings ex exploring the impact social media is having on kids' development and mental health. Plus, what parents can do to help reduce the negative impact it has on today's youth. Catch that story right after News 3 Now at 7 a.m. So we've been keeping our eye on a story in Florida. There is a webcam that's given us a bird's eye view of a bald eagle nest in the making. This is pretty cool. Check it out. These two parents have been a bonded pair for more than 10 years now, but a major storm destroyed their last nest. So a local conservation team stepped in to help. They built a solid platform for this year's nest. And take a look. The eagles have taken to it. They're doing a little decorating right now. Yeah, let's take a live shot uh, of that nest. We've been checking in on them. No live shot. All right. That's uh, okay. This is cuter. Yeah, we checked in a couple of times this morning. I uh, hadn't seen anything. Oh, oh there, there we go. Is. Empty. Uh, it's still empty. This is the hour, Chris Reese says, that the, the <laughs> Eagles Home Depot, the Eagles Menards, <laughs> is just... They flocked there. <laughs> they flocked there to get their equipment. No one thinks that's funny? I was laughing. Okay. And it's their it's their fourth <laughs> trip there this morning. Uh, that's funny because you go back and forth because you always need one more thing. <laughs> okay. Anybody? <laughs> one, of my, one of my favorite things in life is that I live within like two miles of a Menards. I'm sure I these eagles have love to it go too. back. That's true. Okay. 648 coming up in the morning sprint. A new bridge could help bring two counties together for more outdoor access. First, though, we want to say happy birthday to Alan and all the kiddos turning three today. Thanks for celebrating with News 3 Down this morning. We'll be right back.
Locos 3 is sponsored by Three Bears Resort, Indoor Water Park and Conference Center in Warrens, Wisconsin. The Ultimate Sale is happening now at Ashley Home Store. Get ultimate discounts up to 50% off and get a bonus 10% off our sale prices at checkout. Plus, three years interest-free financing with no minimum purchase. Only at Ashley Home Store. At U.S. Cellular, we know the local landscape, so we can help everyone stay connected for less. And less also means more, as in more choice. While the other guys may limit your options, at U.S. Cellular, you choose any phone and we make it free. That's right. Visit our store and any phone you see is free. Plus, get unlimited data for $30 a month and get the most out of our state-of-the-art network, wherever you choose to go. U.S. Cellular, America's locally grown wireless. The grand opening of Slumberland Sleep Solutions, where we've simplified, uncomplicated, and laid things out for you. First, take your rest match to pick your basic mattress type. You love memory foam. I really do. Then shop using the information and rating system on each bed. It's mattress shopping reinvented. Plus, mattress specials for every budget. And save big on our reclining sofas and chairs. On sale now, only at Slumberland Furniture. If your credit card debt is out of control, if you're in over your head in monthly payments, there's a secret the credit card companies don't want you to know. If you have more than $10,000 in credit card debt, you have the right to let us settle that debt for a fraction of what you owe. That's bad news for the credit card companies, but it's great news for you. We're Credit Associates, and we're offering you free information on how to completely resolve your credit card debt with a monthly payment you can afford. To see how much you can save, call now. 1-800-914-7929. Don't declare bankruptcy. Don't consolidate. Give us 10 minutes and we can save you thousands. After all, we depend on your success and offer a guarantee so there's no risk to call. Credit Associates. Live better, debt-free. We'll even show you how to use your stimulus money to jumpstart our services and get you debt-free faster than you ever thought possible. Call Credit Associates now to see how much you could save for free. Call 1-800-914-799. When searching for your dream home, it's important to figure out what style of home you like. Victorian, cottage, Tudor. It's also important to protect your home and all the dreams that come with it. When looking for your dream home, keep in mind good things come in pairs, like dual sinks, Jonathan and me, and pairing your home and auto insurance, which can get you one step closer to achieving your dream. Pretty sure people call it bundling. Bundle your home and auto insurance and save up to 28%. Insure carefully, dream fearlessly. American Family Insurance. The Ultimate Appliance Sale is happening now at Furniture and Appliance Mart. Get ultimate savings on special buys and doorbusters at up to 40% off. Plus ultimate no interest financing for 12 months. Furniture and Appliance Mart inside Ashley Home Store off the Beltline. And coming soon to East Springs Drive. Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. You're watching News 3 Now this morning. Winner of the National Edward R. Murrow Award for Overall Excellence in Television. Welcome back. 6.52, time for the morning sprint. State investigators want to know what really happened on State Street early Sunday morning. According to Madison Police, a sergeant saw Quaton Richardson on a street camera Saturday night out after his bail curfew and during an attempt to arrest Richardson, an officer was shot. Richardson's attorney says the way police worded their news release Sunday morning and their silence in the aftermath left his client in an unfair position. Students at East High School in Madison are planning to walk out tomorrow over the school's handling of an alleged student rape. They say it happened over the weekend, and while the school was notified, no action was taken. Hundreds took part in a walkout yesterday. Police are investigating the incident. This is cool. A partnership between Sauk and Dane Counties would lead to a nice walking and bike break over the Wisconsin River. The plans are to spend $4 million to connect the, Sauk, uh, the Great Sauk Trail with the Walking Iron Trail uh, and a bridge over the river in Sauk City. This connection would make it possible to bike from Dane County all the way to Devils Lake State Park. Once the budgets are approved for both counties, construction could begin as soon as next month. An FDA panel will consider Moderna's request for emergency authorization of its booster shot today. 
Tomorrow, they'll look at Johnson & Johnson's application. Yesterday, FDA staff released data showing people who got J&J's shot might be better off with a booster from Moderna or Pfizer. Still, their data showed a J&J booster did increase antibodies. About 10,000 United Auto Workers Union members began a strike against John Deere this morning. The union had reached a tentative agreement on a new six-year contract with the farm construction equipment maker two weeks ago, but 90% of the rank-and-file union members rejected it in a ratification vote that concluded Sunday. The strike shuts out operations at 11 factories in Illinois, Iowa, and Kansas, and three distribution centers in Georgia, Illinois, and Colorado. The Sauk County Sheriff's Office and the Wisconsin DNR will provide an update today on the one-year anniversary of an unsolved murder at Devil's Lake State Park. Back on October 14th of last year, 24-year-old John Schmutzer was found dead along the Grotto's Trail. No arrests have been made since. The Biden administration planning to aggressively expand offshore wind energy capacity in the U.S. The department is exploring leasing sales along the Atlantic and Pacific coasts. Uh, they'd be the Gulf of Maine, off the New York, New Jersey coast, the Central Atlantic, and the Gulf of Mexico. The Departments of Interior, Energy, and Commerce working together, and they are committed, they say, to a shared goal of generating 30 gigawatts of offshore wind in the U.S. by 2030. The U.S. men's national team able to pick up an important win last night in Columbus. The youngest ever team fielded by the U.S. is trying to get to the World Cup next summer. Costa Rica scored a goal within the first minute, but the U.S. was able to pull off a 2-1 victory. The men's team wasn't able to qualify for the World Cup four years ago. They do still have to perform well in eight more games before they can secure a spot. If you're getting ready for deer hunting season, a few things the DNR wants you to know about. Crossbow and archery season will end on January 9th. Gun hunting is going to run from November 20th to the 28th. Trapping and wolf hunting regulations are separate. You can learn more about that at the DNR's website. The absolute startling, unexpected difference between the darkness of space and the blue of, of Earth. And it's, I would love to be able to describe it in three minutes you can't. More than half a century after his debut as Star Trek's Captain Kirk, 90-year-old William Shatner, now the oldest person to actually travel to space. He traveled as a guest of Amazon founder Jeff Bezos on a Blue Origin spacecraft. After returning to Earth, Shatner called the short voyage the most profound experience he could imagine. A new report says the cost to heat a home is likely to rise the next few months. The U.S. Energy Information Administration says households will spend up to 54% more this winter. That is the hardest hit, uh, especially for Americans who use propane. To make their estimates, it weighs winter forecasts, which say it could be a, a colder than usual season. Also, the price of natural gas, crude oil, and petroleum products are going up. We are waking up to that cloud cover as expected as we go throughout today. Temperatures are at 59 degrees here in southern Wisconsin. There is some rain showing up on radar. Most of that actually stays away from us. The southeastern Wisconsin with the best shot of seeing some raindrops throughout today. We'll warm up towards 66 with sunshine later.